Hi, my name is Kosi Bayoso, physical therapist and PT specialist, and I am your host for Restore Your Everyday. So my goal with this talk is to empower you with information. Those of you listening represent a wide variety of levels of amputation, skills, goals, and stories. But one thing that all of you have in common is a thirst for knowledge, a desire to have a deeper level of understanding of what you've been going through. So today, we're going to talk about proprioception. What is it and why do we care? So how many of you feel that you don't know where your foot or your leg is? How many of you take a step with your prosthesis and you're not sure if your foot is going to be where it's supposed to be when it lands on the ground? That is all due to proprioception or lack thereof. The official definition of proprioception is the brain's ability to know where it is in space. Now, I'm going to play something for you right now on the violin, and I want you to notice a couple of things. I want you to watch and see what my right shoulder, elbow, and wrist are doing with the bow, as well as what my left hand is doing with the strings. And take notice of where my eyes are during this time. Bonus points to the person who can identify the piece. So if you were watching carefully, I wasn't looking at my fingers on my left hand or my arm on my right shoulder or my elbow or my wrist to see what was going on. And even though I played this play the piece a million times, I still have to look at the music. So the reason why I'm able to look at the music and play it at the same time is because of my brain's ability to know where it is in space. My brain's ability to put into play the proprioception. Now, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this is that proprioception is a learned skill. Even the musical prodigies there like Mozart and Paganini had to teach their brains how to do this, how to play their instruments through proprioception. They just learned it at a faster rate. Now, why do I use violin as an example? Besides the fact that my parents paid way too much money for violin lessons when I was growing up, the violin is actually two instruments. The bow arm on the right and the fingers playing on the left. Both have to coordinate to be at the right place at the right time to produce a strong and beautiful sound. And in my mind, as a physical therapist and as a musician, learning to walk with a prosthesis is a lot like playing the violin. You have to coordinate two different instruments to be at the right place at the right time to produce a smooth and beautiful gait pattern. So how is proprioception learned? It's learned through three systems. The visual with the eyes, vestibular with the inner ear, and the proprioceptors. Proprioceptors are located in your muscle fibers and tendons. And I kind of like to think of them as like the little Pac-Men from the video game from the 80s. So these three systems, visual, vestibular, and the proprioceptors, take information from the environment, shoot it to the back part of your spinal cord, where then it goes to the different parts of your brain. The brain interprets this information, sends it back down the spinal cord and out to the nerves to produce the motion that is required. So what happens during an amputation? The muscle fibers are transected in the thigh or in the calf, and then they become kind of like the bottom of the food chain. They don't know where they are, so what used to be the top of the leg now becomes the bottom of the leg, and they're asking the brain for information and things just get jumbled up in the mix. Now, how many of you experience If you were to line up 
10 different clinicians, you would basically get 10 different answers as to what causes phantom pain and sensation. In my opinion, I think it's the result of several different factors and proprioception is one of them. The reason being is when I start to treat my patients, I hammer proprioception into their treatments. And I notice that the more honed their skill is with proprioception and the more comfortable they are with their prosthesis, the symptoms of phantom pain and sensation start to diminish. They might never go away, but it certainly improves. Part of this, I believe, is due to the fact that the brain begins to know that the prosthetic leg is its own and begins to accept it. So let's go back to what I said about proprioception being a learned skill. In my years as a therapist, I worked a lot with patients who experienced stroke or TBI, traumatic brain injury, and it never ceases to amaze me, number one, the brain's ability to heal itself after a traumatic injury, and number two, the brain's ability to relearn some of these old skills again from the past. Many of the treatment techniques that I've used on stroke and TBI patients are what I've applied to some of my amputee patients. And in some ways, there are similarities between the two groups. Here's one of my favorite examples. When I was a young therapist working at the hospital, I was called in to see a woman who had suffered a massive stroke and she had lost the use of half of her body. And as I was talking to her, she was looking down at her arm going, whose arm is that in the bed? And I said, ma'am, that's your arm. And she said, no, that's not my arm. Because of her stroke, her brain lost the ability to recognize its own limb. Much like when an amputee starts to learn to use the prosthesis, the brain still cannot recognize that that leg is now its own. So how do you teach proprioception? You basically have to feed the brain. You do this by taking the three systems, visual, the vestibular, and the proprioceptors, those Pac-Man I was talking about, and you stimulate them with particular exercises. So in this next video, you're going to learn some of the foundational exercises that I start my patients on when they first come to see me. And they are specifically diagnosed and designed to feed your brain. So many times when folks come into my clinic, you know, they're often skeptical at some of these exercises because they're very simple. My patients will tell me, I've been walking up and down the parallel bars at my prosthetist office, so why do you have me doing these really simple exercises? But then when I ask them what happens when they try to leave the parallel bars without a walker or crutches, that's when they pause. And the reason why they have difficulty leaving the, the parallel bars without a walker or crutches is because they don't have that foundation set that foundation that has allowed for the proprioception to develop. So my patients are absolutely right. These exercises are very simple. They don't require fancy equipment or special techniques, but they're very effective at setting the foundation for the walking pattern that needs to happen. They get the brain primed with learning proprioception and beginning to accept that prosthesis as its own. Karen was a woman who came to see me after three years of trying to walk without a walker unsuccessfully with her above the knee prosthesis. She did these particular foundational exercises for one week. And when she came in to see me that following week, her exclamation to me was, I feel steady. I was able to wash the dishes for the first time without having to hold on to something. Now, these exercises are not just for beginners. I use these exercises for the entire course of the treatment. As my patients become higher level functioning, these exercises serve as a wonderful warm up tool and also to help reboot things in case there's a plateau in their progress. It's also a great way to learn about a new component. So for those of you who might be receiving a new socket, a new foot, switching from a mechanical knee to a microprocessor knee. These exercises are great at allowing the brain a chance to get acclimated to the new unit. So as my patients become more confident with these exercises, it correlates 
with improvement in their gait pattern. When you give the brain a chance to learn some of these foundational components and start to develop that proprioception in a simplified way, it has a better chance of developing the good habits that are needed and to build upon. Thank you for joining me for this segment of Restore Your Every Day. Don't forget to sign up for our www.RestoreYourEveryday.com. Stick around and watch these simple and effective exercises that will help you develop that proprioception. And more importantly, getting you back to restoring your everyday.